Where is the energy today? Nowhere. I was at a zoo yesterday and I am dying from that. It was great fun, but I just want to be in bed reading, so you're welcome that you have a video to watch. Hi everyone! This video is going to be an absolute hot mess, as usual. Going into 2019 with the same aesthetic as normal, I'm on brand, I'm not even going to blabber, we're doing my 2018 wrap up. I don't have any physical books to hold up for you guys because I'm lazy. I did not want to raid my shelves for the books I'd read and I just decided it would look a lot neater if all of the books were just shown the same way in a picture. Which is more effort on my part, so really I'm not that lazy, it's just that that type of effort can be done from the comfort of my bed <laughs> rather than physical movement, so. <laughs> I have Goodreads up on my phone and I am just gonna briefly talk through all of the books that I read in 2018. <laughs> The first book that I read in 2018 was Meet Cute, which is an anthology edited by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. Well, three and a half stars I've written. I just wonder, should I like put my seat up? That's better. <laughs> then I read A Shiver of Snow and Sky by Lisa Ledecky, which I gave three stars. Then I had my first disappointing read of the year, which was Bad Girls with Perfect Faces by Lynn Weingarten, and this only got two stars. Then I read my first poetry collection of the year, which was The Chaos of Longing by K.Y. Robinson, and I gave this four stars. And now we get into a little batch of net galley arcs. <laughs> this is what happens when I get to December and have to read like 30 books to reach my goal. I find all the net galley books that I read or skimmed through and add them to Goodreads like a little cheat that I am. But the first of these was a graphic novel called Daubigny's Garden by Bruno de Rover, which I gave four stars. Then I read Aina which is by Alan Dodier, or that's the illustrator, that's all the good reads it's giving me. And I gave this four stars. No, I didn't. I gave this three stars. <sighs> then we have my most proudest accomplishment over the year, and that is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Of course, this was a five star read for me. I am so proud of myself for reading this book. It was so freaking good. It's really, like, obviously the book is really sad because it's called The Fucking Miserable Ones, but, like, one of the beauties of classics and, like, books written in historical periods is that you get a view on social commentary. Do you know, like, of course, Hugo's writing in the 1800s and it was published in 1862 or 63. So what Hugo talks about is what was relevant in the 1800s. And what I find really, really sad is that there were parts where he was talking and I would have believed if I had just been reading an excerpt with no title or author that it had been written today. Especially when you think about the fact that this was an old white man and he was like not pleased with how women were being treated, how poor people were being, like, this man was fucking woke. <laughs> like, legit woke as fuck. It was actually, was that my first five star of the year? It was. Oh, that's fitting. <laughs> then I read one of, if not the most surprising book of the year, and that was The Bunker Diary by Kevin Brooks. I gave this four and a half stars and just Wow. <laughs> I was told for years to avoid that book like the plague. I was told it was horrible, that the ending was horrible, that it was just just bad. Not like a bad book, like badly written, but just that it would basically just make you feel like shit. And I don't know what it says about me because it is definitely like really depressing, but I fucking loved it. Back to graphic novels that are, well, graphic biographies of artists, I read Vincent by Barbara Stock, which I gave 3.75 stars, although I bumped up to four on Goodreads. Then I read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Uh, this got 2.75 stars for me. I don't remember anything that happened in this book. Here's my gripe. Now, a lot of people will disagree, because if I recall, The Cruel Prince is in like two parts. There's book one, book two. People are like, oh, it felt like a different book. No, do you know what it felt like? It felt like the first part of a book that's all exposition, backstory and build up. And then it stops. And I'm assuming that book two will be like where all the sort of action happens. This could be a whole other video, but basically The Cruel Prince should have been like a 600 page book. But what they've done is where 
we can make this a series, chopped it in half, made us buy the first half, and then they'll charge us again for the second half. And I'm not about that fucking life. So I don't care how great the Wicked King or whatever it's called is gonna be. You pissed me off by selling me exposition or whatever. So yeah, 2.75 stars because nothing fucking happened. It was the beginning of a story and it just didn't work as an individual book for me. Sorry, my Anna, I know how much you love the book. Then I read Entangled by Kat Clark, and I gave this two and a half stars, but I feel like I was a little bit mean on it, just because I think I was expecting more mystery. And it was mystery, but I found it quite predictable, and I think it's just because it's probably aimed at younger kids, and I read that not appreciating that, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, you read a book, and you rate it on your own enjoyment but I feel like as reviewers and bloggers and whatever we do kind of have to be critical and we have to remember when books are written for a certain audience. Then another net galley arc was a graphic novel called Liddy by Zidru and I only gave this two stars and I really thought I would love it but I just I don't know it basically involves it's like this it's kind of historical and it's this woman and I don't know if her baby dies or she miscarries but like it's all about how she believes that this child is really there and how the community that she lives in all just kind of agree and they ask how the child's doing and all this stuff and I just I think what got me is that the woman is clearly mentally ill you know she believes the child is there and I was just so frustrated the way that you know, the way that everyone in this community came together to feed this problem. Nobody was trying to help her. You know, I mean, I don't know anything about the psychology of it or what was actually like going on with her. So maybe just making her think that it's real is the way to go. But I just it didn't didn't rub me the right way. My next read was Seed by Lisa Heathfield, which I gave three stars. My next five star read was Spectacle, volume one by Megan Rose Gedris. The artwork of this was stunning. Then I read The Warden's Daughter by Jerry Spinelli. This was five stars for me. I fucking love Jerry Spinelli. I've only read Stargirl and The Warden's Daughter, but I just freaking love this bit and I bought it in Shakespeare and Co in Paris so like the book has a special place anyway. <laughs> then I read Body and Soul by Gregory Mardon which was a two star read. I have no fucking clue what this was about, I just remember not liking it that much. Same with Limited Edition by Odd Pico which I gave 2.75 stars. The artwork was quite simple which I gave two stars to The Client by Zidru. Um, I was confused when I read this and again, no idea what happened in it. And I read The Damned Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Cullen Bunn back to back. Volume 1 I gave three stars. Volume 2, which I ended up only giving two stars, wasn't as enjoyable. Then I read See How They Lie by Sue Wallman, which I gave 2.75 stars to. Things Were Redeemed when I picked up Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman. Five star read absolutely stunning book, both cover and content. Then I reread Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which gave, which gave, <laughs> which I gave five stars to, of course. I then picked up Nightlife by Caitlin Kittredge, which is actually, I gave 1.75 stars to. It is a sexy vampire book. No, it's not. It's a sexy werewolf book. That's even worse. I gave four stars to Shatter Me by Tahiramafi. I really enjoyed this. I quite like a dystopian. I forget how much I enjoy a dystopian. I need to buy the other books in the series so I can keep reading. I also gave four stars to More Weird Things Customers See in Bookshops. As an ex-bookseller, I completely relate to the absolute crap that comes out of book buying people's mouths. <laughs> I gave five stars to The Lost Path by Amelie Fliché, which was a net galley arc. This was just gorgeous. It was so cute. Young kids will love it. Older people will love it. One of those books that just surpasses age ranges and it was just a joy to read. Another five star read was Out of the Blue by Sophie Cameron. I did not think I would love this book as much as I did. I was excited about the fact that it's set in Edinburgh because 
low <laughs> and it, you know it's just cool to like experience places that I knew I want to read everything Sophie Cameron ever writes. I then gave four stars to The Big Empty Life of Alphonse Taboure by Sibylline Desmazier which is another sort of graphic novel and all I'm gonna say is the first line I wrote in my review which is I'm confused but also so happy. Then I gave five stars to Sheets by Brenna Thumler. Thumler. I am obsessed with this graphic novel. It has pink and blue as the colour scheme which is like my life. It was just so freaking cute and I need a physical copy in my life ASAP. I then read Selected Poems by T.S. Eliot and I didn't give this a rating just because I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I then borrowed Alpha Abedij Abidjan to Gardenor by Basora from the library and I gave this five stars. I gave two stars to Open Earth by Sarah Merck. I appreciated what the author was trying to do. If you've not read this graphic novel it is literally like we're like the world, people live in space now but everyone is just very open, there's like no boundaries, like people like there's like no norm when it comes to sexuality. Like people just aren't assumed to be heterosexual. Um, polygamy, is that the word? They're like, that's like a very big thing. People are just very open and you know, really like, people aren't really exclusive and just sex is a very normal thing. Like people will walk into a room and be like, hey, do you wanna hang out? And it'd be like someone's reading a book going, yeah, let me just finish this, except they're fucking someone. The problem that I had with it was it was like they were throwing this like, look, these people are just having sex now, they're going off and having sex with this person constantly. And it got to the point where it was just a pointless porno. That's how it felt. Like, I just felt that's what I was just reading pointless erotica. And I was like, I'm not here for this. Like, you can have that aspect of the world and still have some sort of story going on. I then gave 3.75 stars to She, Myself and I by Emma Young. Then I gave five stars to Brina by Salati Giorgio. Oh, this was just about a little cat and it was so cute. I gave 3.75 stars to The Island, or is it just Island? I don't even know, by David Almond. I gave four stars to Dad, Volume 1, Daddy's Girls by Nob. <laughs> and this is just a fun little graphic novel which shows you a single dad raising four daughters and it was just so much fun. I gave five stars to The Arrival by Sean Tan. I'm sure you guys have heard of this. I gave four stars to The Girls by Emma Klein, which I buddy read with Kevin from Storyglyph. I gave five stars to The Man La Magnifique Grande Scene Volume 1 by Kuvi. I gave 3.75 stars to Then There Were None by B.P. Smith. I then went back and read the first book of Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell and I gave it five stars. I then reread Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by J.K. Rowling. I listened to this on audiobook. Five stars. Who's surprised? I then buddy read Sophie's World by Justin Garder with Mira and we both really struggled with this book. I ultimately gave it three stars. Another net galley graphic novel was Southbound Glorious Summers by Zadru again. Finally a Zadru that I actually gave more than like two stars to. I gave this one five stars. I then read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern which I gave five stars to and I buddy read this with Kevin again and also Tom from TG Reads the Stars. Then we have the book that I have waited my entire life for without even knowing. Just Don't Mention It by Estelle Bascom. Five stars. No one's surprised. Then I read Neon Soul, a collection of poetry and prose by Alexandra L and I gave four stars to this. I gave five stars to Aquicorn Cove by Katie O'Neill. This is fucking adorable. I gave three and a half stars to Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I read Goldilocks and the Infinite Bears by John McNamee, which I gave five stars to. I gave four stars to Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley. I really enjoyed this book. It was fun. I loved it. I gave three stars to Geekerella by Ashley Poston. One of my other surprising reads of the year was Is Kichichogi, Ki Kichichoji the Only Place to Live by Makiroshi, which I gave five stars to. We're going to pretend that my words just didn't go <laughs> on that name. But this is a manga following these two girls who work in a real estate agency and they basically they have people come in who are looking for apartments usually it's like single women 
and they end up being like are you sure you want to stay in Kichishogi do you not want to go here or go there and it does actually give you like an insight into other areas of Japan and I just really liked it it was so freaking cute I gave four stars to the Hazelwood by Melissa Albert I read the Dreaming volume one two and three Volumes 1 and 2 got 4 stars, Volume 3 got 3 stars. Then I read Seeking Dad 2.0 by Gwendolyn Raison, which got 1 star. <laughs> I was very upset with the fact that the book was confusing celibacy with asexuality. Didn't like it. <laughs> I gave 4 stars to The Grand Odalisque by Bastien Vive. I have no recollection of this. I gave four stars to All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I thought it was cute. The movie was cute. I reread A Darker Shade of Magic by V. E. Schwab in preparation, or well, as part of Common Spence's Darker Shade of Relongs, and my rating was the same. I gave it three stars. Then I read Co Costume Quest Invasion of the Candy Snatchers by Zach Gorman. I gave it five stars. I thought it was really cute. I had no idea that Costume Quest is like an actual video game thing. I gave four stars to The Poetry Collection Soft Thorns by Bridget Devu. Five stars to Super Chill A Year of Living Anxiously by Adam Ellis. Adam worked for BuzzFeed so you can imagine the type of book it is and it is just like painfully relatable comic strips and they are really funny. I gave five stars to The Lost Estate or Le Grand Monde by Alain Fournay which I buddy read with Aurélie from Knit and Read. Then I read French for Kissing by Sophie Parkin which I gave three stars to. I then read Trust Again by Mona Caston which I gave five stars to. I freaking loved Mona Kasson's first book, Begin Again, and this is the sequel. It's more a companion novel. I then read Lying in Wait by Liz Nugent, which I gave three stars. Can't remember anything about it. One of those thrillers. I gave five stars to Skylarks by Karen Gregory. I am obsessed. I love this book. I also gave five stars to Slothilda by Dante Fabiero, which again, it's like the sort of comic strip things. I am literally a Slothilda relatable. I listened to the audiobook of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, five stars, obviously it was a reread, and the only review I've put is, the golden trio treat Hagrid like shit in this book, lol. And they do! I gave three stars, or 3.75 stars, to The Truth About Lies by Tracy Darnton. Again, it was one of those where I thought it was going to be more mysterious than it was, and I just didn't care very much. And of course, this is where my Goodreads fucks up, but I finished... <laughs> Hmm. Finished trying to read Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak. Um, yeah, moving on. <laughs> I decided to give Zusak another try though and listened to the audiobook of The Underdog, which I ended up giving two stars to. Literally read like fucking Bridge of Clay, except contingently and only two characters, so it wasn't as confusing. I then read A Gathering of Shadows by V. Schwab and I gave four stars to that book. I gave four stars to A Colourful Tale, Finding Monet at Giverny, which is like a kid's book about this artist. Five stars to Loading Penguin Hugs by Jacqueline Chen, which is again like a sort of meme comic strip type book. I didn't give a rating to The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry because I didn't really enjoy it very much. However, it was kind of like the first book I went into after Zusak's disappointment, so I want to give it another try at some point and hopefully I'll like it more. This, again, was another super surprising book. I gave four stars to Frozen Charlotte by Alex Bell. I hate creepy dolls. This book was creepy, but it was so freaking good. I, there's like a companion novel that I really want so we'll see how that goes. And then I read Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendar Blake. I gave this three stars. It was good. I have the sequel. I will pick that up eventually. I then finally got around to listening to Deathly Hallows. Five stars obviously. When will I start rereading Harry Potter again? Pretty soon I imagine. I gave three and a half stars to There's Someone Inside Your House. I gave two and a half stars to Blackout by Emily Barr. I gave four stars to Lumberjanes, Beware the Kitten Holy. The four stars are literally for the artwork alone. I definitely want to pick up the rest of the graphic novels. I gave three stars to Fruits Basket Volume 1. It was all right but I don't see myself picking up the rest. Four stars to another NetGalley arc, Tim Burton's Night Before Christmas, Zero's Journey. I love Zero so 
love this. I gave four stars to The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I listened to The Mysterious Affair of Styles, Hercule Poirot number one by Agatha Christie and I gave it three stars. To be fair though, I don't really think I was listening that carefully because I have no recollection of it. I then gave it five stars to Bird Meets Cage by Anita Sunday. 4.5 but I gave it five on Goodreads. I listened to A Strange Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle which I gave four stars to. I then was sent a physical arc of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I just thought it was all right. Three stars, three and a half stars, a bit disappointing. I gave five stars to Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. I listened to the audiobook that Eddie Redmayne narrates and I I gave five stars to Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. This is another novel in verse. I thought it was gorgeous. It made me cry. I gave four and a half stars to Giant Days Volume 1 by John Allison. I definitely want to keep going with the volumes, series, books, whatever. And then we get into panic reading mode. So I reread The Fox and the Star by Coralie Bickford Smith. Of course, it got five stars. It's going to be like a tradition now, I think, where I read it on Christmas Day because that's when I read it. I gave five stars to The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one by Amanda Lovelace. I adored this one. Like I think I liked it more than the first book. I gave five stars to Dear Evan Hansen by Val Emish. Clearly the end of the year was just five star reads for me. Like wow. <laughs> it really was actually. I gave five stars to Out of Oz by Gregory Maguire. I totally started to skim read so I need to like go back and properly read that but it was always going to be five stars. And I've finally finished the Wicked series. And my final read of 2018 was the Worm and the Bird by Coralie Bickford Smith. That is it. Those are all of the books that I read in 2018. Hopefully 2019 is a little better. I feel like I had a lot of like mediocre reads this last year. I was gonna do a stats video so we could properly see but as I said earlier can't be fucked getting the books out. So that's that. This video is going to be an interesting one because I don't think it's turned out quite how I wanted it to but hey it's fine at least there's content. So yeah thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know below if you read any of these books last year and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!